Hello, this is Steve Olson, Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to show you how to create vault properties. So the scenario is you've got some sort of property that you want to track in vault and maybe even want to connect that to an inventor property, which I'll actually cover that in the next video. Um, but first off, we have to create the vault property. So anybody that is an admin can do this in vault. Uh, the average user probably can't do this. Uh, but I'm going to go up here to tools, administration, vault settings. That's going to take me into where pretty much most of the things that you can do or most of the, the specifications or configurations that you can do for vault are handled here. I'm going to go to my behaviors tab. And then down here, I can tell it I want to create a property. So I'm going to go to properties. And just so you know, there are two different types of properties in Vault. You have the, what they call the user defined or UDP. And you can see this icon right here where it has like a little person in front of the, that tag. That lets me know it's something that I have the ability to modify. Uh, you can see that there's the system ones. If you look real close, it looks like a gear. Um, those are system defined properties and I really don't have any control over those. The vault uses those to track specific information like who's checked things out. You can see here checked in, checked out, checked out by. These are all things that are system property. Checked by is something that's a user defined property. So is author, things that I can then modify. The property I thought about creating here is something I call stock location, which is maybe I want to track where that object is sitting on the shelf out in my warehouse. So I'm going to go up here to say new, and I just have to name the property. So I'll call it stock location. I have to tell it what type of data is going into that field. Is it a piece of text? Is it a number? Is it a true, false, or a date? For me, I'm going to have a letter and a number a mix. So I'm going to go to and just leave it at text. The next thing I need to define is what this is associated with. When you get into different levels of Vault, uh, between Vault Basic, Vault Workgroup, Vault Professional, you'll have different types of objects that you're working with. Uh, perhaps maybe a change order, a custom object, an item, a file, a folder. In my case, I'm just going to be worrying about a specific file. And my files in Vault Professional have different categories. Actually, this is true for Workgroup and Professional. So I'll just tell it I want to put in all my different file categories. Uh, and actually, now that I think about that a second time, I'm going to turn off Office and Standard and Design rep Representation. Engineering and Basic. Realistically, you're going to put it on whatever proper or whatever category you're using most frequently. I'm going to go ahead and say close. I want to look at a few other options here just so you have an idea of what we have the ability to do. We have the ability to disable the property. The basic search here is uh, this field up here in the uh, in that main pane behind this here is your basic search. Is this going to be searched with that basic search? I can put an initial value. I can enforce a list of values. I can force the list of values, requires a value, case sensitivity, minimum and maximum length. So I have all these different uh, properties. And you can see here, I can even set those specific to the two different category values that I was defining earlier. We can then get into mapping, and that's something a little bit different. I want to kind of come back and do that in another video when we actually map this property to an inventor file. We'll do that a little bit later here. But for settings right now, I'll have this property created. I'll go ahead and say OK, say close, close. And to prove that that property now exists, uh, if I go to uh, into one of these files here, I can look over here in the data property and you can see it doesn't exist on this one yet. But if I go ahead and edit the properties, that one's released. Let me find one that isn't released here. So if I go to this one, I go to tell it to edit the properties. 
have to go up here to edit. I always forget it's underneath the edit and not in the right click menu. I can then tell it to select properties and I should find my stock location as an available, as available value. I'll say OK and there it is. So I can now edit this. Let me just put it a value in here. I'll say it's in K102. Say OK. Say close. And now you'll see that I have stock location uh, as available there. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope you found the information useful that you can apply to your normal workflows. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.